Joshua's in Bexley. Joshua, what would you like to say? Uh, hi, James. Hello. So I am an A-level computer science teacher. Oh, yeah. Um, and I wanted to come at it within some of the things that we actually teach within computer science that are quite relevant to this conversation. Because I, I spend all of my time pretty much with A-level students talking about algorithms and what makes a good algorithm. Right. And oh, Lord, mate. So this, is almost, think, this is almost unbearably ironic, right? Yes. yes. And so I go through, and so and we get into, as I say, we're going through a number of things about what makes a good algorithm. And there are two concepts in particular that uh, come up whilst I look at things, being a precondition and actual testing. And yes. I, I just don't see how either of those have been adequately met. I see one precondition, as I go through, as we've sort of like been able to go through and yeah. I think everybody kind of sees, which is teachers' predicted grades, yes. as they have stated them, are not accurate. Right. And everybody has inflated. And as I've, I've said going through, within, certainly within our anecdotal stuff yes. that we've heard today, that does not feel like an accurate statement. No. And if so, but if and so, if you are running from an invalid precondition, you cannot write a correct algorithm. But the computer science teacher is in disagreement with the physics teacher, who felt that the overall suggestion that that, that, that the assessments might be implausibly high was sound, and he had statistical support for that. Crikey, well, I'm sounding like an open so university professor. Now, I'm not in complete disagreement. No. There is one element that I agree with. Now, there are going to be, obviously, individual schools. There has been reports about individual schools who have done implausibly high things. Yes. And you've also got uh, certainly an argument about, uh, which you can make for uh, particular students who are on the boundaries between different grades. Yes. If you are a BC grade student, then perhaps there has been a slight bias to have given you the B rather than the C. Okay, I can yes. see that argument. That I have answered different. And so I can see some uh, justifications for going through and downgrading. But that, that's where I then come into this second point about testing. Right. And to, in order to run a, a series of tests, you need to be effectively going through to be, to be confident that Everything makes sense. And then we, as I go, and then we bring it back then to the public versus private school situation, yes. the high versus so, uh, low, high versus low socioeconomic background students. And then we say, and we see this thing that then says, these students have not been treated in the same way. Let me, let me pause you there and, and make it even perhaps more digestible by saying it doesn't actually have to be a private school. It just has to be a school or a subject with very small class size, or with smaller than 15 class size. And so that is almost always going to be private schools, but it's actually, it, it makes it in many ways more insidious that, that you can see the number and not notice the implication, not, not note the impact. Um, and in some ways actually goes through, um, potentially goes even further than that, because I, I need to double check sure. this, but the, the idea of the class size of 15 in total I believe there has partial use of the algorithm. Right. Um, whereas then a, I believe it's a class group of five. I would need to, oh, I would need someone to double okay. check my information. Well, no, on but that. the point, the, the central point stands about it it's more stands, to do with absolutely. class size than fee paying. But of course, the, they will almost always go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, but then as I go through, we, um, when you run those comparisons against those with large class sizes versus small classes or high versus mm. low or whatever set of metrics that we look at and we and we're seeing the unfairness and then we go through and say well actually does this uh, we have to, we have to go through and say do we actually believe that the data that we are seeing as an output yeah matches what we expected to see right. as an output and obviously everything that we're hearing today makes me say that the vast majority of people believe the answer to that is no, no and this is algorithms 101